What's up, Canisaurs? It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Also, the YouTube channel that was created by a retail investor for retail investors and home to the best MJ community. Today is Tuesday. It's September 3rd. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to do an MJ portfolio update, my entire MJ portfolio with percentages for September 2024. This is definitely going to change over the next three, six months, so I'll continue to do updates. And this is going to be released as a member-only video and early access. So if you're viewing this after the fact, uh, we did launch memberships on the channel. So you can join and uh, you can see all the different perks. You get uh, member-only videos and then early access and a bunch of other perks as well. But before we jump to it, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, take the bell, all that good stuff, and you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. As always, this is not financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor, and you should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or write. Also, shout out to all of the channel members. Really do appreciate all the support. And you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. Handle for that is at Group Pal. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And just in case we ever get cut off here on YouTube, uh, X is actually going to be launching a YouTube competitor. It's called XTV, and uh, that's in beta now. So exciting times ahead. But as promised, I mentioned that I'd get another MJ portfolio update out before the end of the year. And I'll probably do one at the end of the year, maybe uh, early 2025 in the first quarter. As we know, I'm Canadian, and Canadians get a TFSA, tax-free savings account. So each year, you get usually, I think last year it was like 7000 so it's usually between six and 7000 that you can add to your tax-free savings, which means that any money that you put into that long-term, when you withdraw it, it's tax-free, right? As in the name. So uh, that's what I'm going to be holding out a lot of my TFSA for. And then I'm also looking at uh, a crypto XRP. They might come out with an ETF, so I might even save some of that contribution room for that ETF, but we'll see. And I uh, just wanted to make a quick note here before I forget. I do own more crypto dollar-wise than I do MJ. In my entire crypto portfolio, I have more money, right? More dollars invested into that portfolio than I do MJ. And that's because I think MJ, well, I know MJ has been in a brutal four-year bear market, almost four years, and crypto has been in a four-year bull market. And I think crypto's getting close to the end of its bull market. We're going to see a euphoric, crazy all season, and then we're going to see rotation into MJ. That's what I'm going to be looking to do is going to be rotating my crypto profits into beating down MJ. And I've got a mutual fund account, right? I've got real estate. I've got five condos, two long-term rentals. I live in one and I have two Airbnbs. So I'm very diversified. I've also got a very large cash position. I've got other stocks in my portfolio, not just MJ, not just crypto. I've got other you know stocks like tech stocks. I've also got mutual funds and things like that in my retirement account. So, And then I also have my RESP for my daughter, right? Regist registered Education Savings Plan. And the only MJ stock that I own in that portfolio at the moment is Tilray. So I'll be holding that until the US legalizes or until she's ready to go to school, essentially, and use that for educational purposes. And I'll be looking at adding to that. I'm looking at maybe adding like a Cure Leaf and an MSOS potentially, uh, just kind of holding off on that. And uh, we've been seeing some downward prices. So I might even pull the trigger. I contributed to that, you know, every couple of weeks. So I might look at something different on the next buy. And then something that I'll mention before I get into the holdings here and the percentages, I have a short-term account and I have a longer-term account. And then some names that I'm looking at adding, which I don't own directly, is Trueleaf. That's one um, that's on my radar. There's some other, like the other ones on this list I'm looking to add to them, uh, just, you know, slow and steady. But uh, over time, you know, I continue to nibble. But uh, one name that I don't own yet is Trueleaf, but I'm looking to potentially add that as a Florida legalization play come November, which I think will get approved. I just posted a video on that as well with Trump uh, getting pretty vocal. So you, you got to check that out. But uh, essentially, I'm looking at Trulieve. I own it indirectly through MSOS ETF. So, you know, I do have it there, but uh, I may look at adding some some individually and uh, some direct exposure. The only reason why I don't have it is just because it's it's quite overvalued right now comparative to the rest of the sector. I'm waiting for some lower prices and um, I'm starting to get intrigued. But, you know, from current prices to basically all-time highs on True Leave, you're only looking at a 400 to 500% move, uh, which I think there's a lot better opportunities out there. But uh, not downplaying the fact that, uh, you know, it shouldn't be in anybody's per portfolio. It's just not in mine, but technically it is because I own it through MSOS ETF, okay? So one thing I want to stress as well is having a short-term account and a longer-term account. So my longer-term account is my TFSA that I was talking about, my tax-free savings account, and I am not selling a single share of MJ in that account until the U.S. legalizes at the federal level, similar to what happened in Canada legalization in 2018. 
I will not be selling a single share. I have it in a shorter term account, which is an RRSP, which is a registered retirement savings plan. I'll be holding in there until certain price levels, right? So I have, you know, for example, on Tilray, I'll start to take profit at $5 and then another tranche at $10, another at 15, 20, et cetera. And then I'll just look to reload cheaper on some of those MJ positions, right? I'm not gonna take the money out because then you're taxed. I'm just gonna have it, you know, sitting in my RSP and you can trade more frequently in an RSP. I'm not a tax advisor. Again, I'm not giving you tax or financial advice. Consult your tax advisor, your financial advisor, if you're looking for more information pertaining to your situation, but that's just what I'm doing, right? And then that way I have a long-term account and I'm holding that one indefinitely. You can even set like a time period or a catalyst, right? I'm, mine's not really so much time driven. It's a catalyst. It's catalyst driven, right? When the U.S. legalizes that hype and that lead up to that. I don't care if it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, however long I have to wait, that TFSA is not going to be touched at all. And I don't even log into it, to be honest. The only time I log in is whenever I go to buy stuff. So my RRSP, my shorter term account, I'll be taking a little bit more frequent trades. I'll look to reload cheaper and I have some price targets for those. Maybe I'll do a separate video. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that where I go over some, you know, an exit strategy and a price uh, level and take profit level. But we'll jump into my holdings here. So to nobody's surprise, more than likely, Tilray Brands, so ticker symbol TLRY, is my largest position by far. It's about 22% of my MJ portfolio at the moment. Second on the list, this hasn't changed either since my last update is Cureleaf Holdings. So ticker symbol C-U-R-A. They just recently uplisted to the TSX following Tercen, and I, they said that they're in talks with the uh, with a U.S. major exchange potentially as well, warming up to that. So we'll see what happens there. Probably the Nasdaq, if I had to guess, but that accounts for 11% of my portfolio. I think that this, again, not telling you to buy, sell, or hold, but I think that that name right now is extremely attractive in terms of its current valuation and price. Uh, I think that uh, this could offer some serious upside. And then third on the list, we have MSOS ETF. That accounts for 11% of my portfolio. Organogram and SNDL are both tied. So we have those tied at 7% of my portfolio. Following them is high tide, ticker symbol HITI. And that accounts for 16% of my MJ portfolio. Then I have Canopy Growth, Canera Biotech, Cresco, and AYR all coming in at 5%. Oxley, I've been recently adding to those to that position as well. That is now accounting for about 4%. And I'm looking at getting Hugo Alves on the CEO of Oxley for an interview here in the not too distant future, hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks, a couple of months. Uh, we're just trying to nail down a time and, uh, and go through all the details there. So keep an eye out for that. But I think that company could be a serious turnaround story and could offer like unlimited, the sky's the limit really in terms of the upside uh, potential on this one if it if it doesn't get acquired or, you know, if it's if it's here when everything's all said and done, right? I think that company could be a massive turnaround and success story. Followed by that is Green Thumb, so GTII, that accounts for 3% of my portfolio, followed by Cron, Village Farms, and Aurora. Those are all 2%. I recently added Avicenna, AVCN, that's 1% of my portfolio when I interviewed the CEO, Aras. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out. But uh, medical company in play here in Canada, Canada sorry, and uh, cannabinoid medical company. Uh, but if you haven't seen that, you got to check out that interview. It's a very intriguing company. And uh, the stock was actually up almost 15% at the close today. I'm up about 20% just on that position alone. Follow that. Followed by that is Body and Mind and Nevis Brands. Those all account for 1% of my portfolio, which is a total of 18 holdings and 100% markup of those 18 holdings. So ran through that pretty quickly. Let me know your top five, your top 10. <laughs> yeah, if you got a large portfolio like me, uh, feel free to tape out all of your holdings from biggest to smallest. Uh, curious to hear, love hearing from you and curious to see what everybody else has in their wallet, in their portfolio uh, to, uh, to quote Capital One. But yeah, what's in your MJ wallet? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if it's a super long list, and you don't want to list them out. Maybe just list, list your top three or your top five. But like I said, if you got time and you want to type it all out, feel free to do so. But again, we'll do another update at some point in the not too distant future, more than likely toward the end of 2024, beginning of 2025. And again, this was a member only video initially for early access, and I'll be opening it up to the public. I'm not sure how long I'll uh, leave it as a member only video. We'll see maybe a couple days, couple weeks. We'll go from there. All right. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and what you hold in your portfolio in the comment section. We'll continue the conversation there. It's Rod with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth, and we'll see you again on the next video.